Welcome to the Lben Tea House, I am your host, Lben. Tonight, let's embrace popular culture and tell the story of one of the eight most notorious haunted houses in the country, Jinan's Quancheng Square. Friends who have been to Jinan must have a deep impression of this beautiful place. Do you know why it is called Quancheng? Quan, who does this Quan belong to? It is said that during the spring and autumn warring states period, this area was under the territory of Qi State. Who was the first ruler of Qi State? That would be Jiang Shang, also known as Jiang Taigong. Jiang Taigong saw that each household here had flowing springs and fragrant willows everywhere, with a view of the beauty of Thousand Buddha Mountain and the serenity of Daming Lake, and he exclaimed that the mountains could gather people and water could gather wealth, and this truly was a land of fortune. Therefore, he decided to establish the capital here and named it Quancheng. Ever since then, Quancheng has become a place where scholars and talents emerged, profoundly influencing the course of the Chinese nation for thousands of years. It can be said to be a place full of spiritual energy, known as a geomantic treasure. Beneath the Thousand Buddha Mountain, beside Deming Lake, the aura of the Black Tiger Spring and the liveliness of Furong Street also add to its charm. Speaking of Furong Street, it is a snack street that bustles with activity during meal times, with smoke swirling all around. I really want to go to the banks of Daming Lake and write another poem to depict its beauty. But wait a minute, aren't we supposed to tell a frightening story tonight? How did we end up here? Let's get back to our main topic. Quancheng Square is situated in the bustling heart of Jinan City, and the Ginza Shopping Center here is a focal point within the business district. Surrounded by mountains, it's bustling and extremely lively. Xiao Zhang, as a security guard at the Quancheng Square Ginza Shopping Center, is just in his 20s this year and doesn't have much experience. However, he was selected when he applied for the job. Why was this job so readily available? It turns out that the Ginza Shopping Center has always had some difficulties with recruiting. Business staff during the day can barely be recruited, but the night shift security guards do not stay long, most would leave after 3 to 5 days, some without even taking their pay. Why is that? They all said that the place is too eerie at night, preferring to leave without pay than to stay. To address this problem, the mall could only offer daily payment, thus barely recruiting some people willing to work. Xiao Zhang also went there for the daily payment, and the job duties were quite simple. Patrol the mall after it closed at night, check if the shop's doors were locked, if the power was shut down, and perform theft and fire prevention checks. After midnight, they were allowed to sleep, needing to patrol once more before going to bed, and then the day's work could be finished. Tonight, Xiao Zhang officially started his job, and it happened to be Saturday night. Since the mall closes half an hour later on weekends, Xiao Zhang's first patrol time was 10.50 p.m. The corridors of the mall turned dim, lit only by emergency lights, and Xiao Zhang patrolled lazily, hoping to find any shop that forgot to lock its door. This is because if he found an unlocked shop, the shop would be fined 200 yuan, 100 of which would be a reward for the finder. Thus, Xiao Zhang searched with his flashlight like a treasure hunter, searching each and every shop. With a bit of luck, he actually found one. As Xiao Zhang passed by a jewelry store, he noticed that although the lock was hung on the door, it was not actually locked. He gently pulled, and the lock came off. Thinking to himself that he was quite lucky tonight to accidentally earn an extra hundred yuan was an unexpected surprise. Xiao Zhang pocketed the lock and continued his patrol. Of course, it was no longer possible to lock the shop now, as the evidence was in his hands. Thus, with the lock in his possession, he continued on his way. Around 11.20 pm, after completing a full round of patrol without finding any other anomalies, he planned to return to the security office to wait for time to pass. He knew he could sleep after midnight, so he sat there waiting, wishing the time would come quickly, yet he knew he had to patiently wait to avoid trouble from the monitoring center. However, after returning to the security office, Xiao Zhang felt a bit uneasy, as if there was the sound of running water outside. But he recalled that he had checked the taps in the restroom, they were all turned off. Where was this water sound coming from? Xiao Zhang had already heard the rumors about the Ginza shopping center being haunted, could this be why they couldn't find security guards? He tried to convince himself that this might be due to Jinan's rich underground water resources. During construction, a spring was dug up beneath the Ginza, which was later sealed, perhaps it was the sound of water flowing from somewhere there. Xiao Zhang tried not to think too much and stayed in the room waiting for time to pass. But time always seems to move particularly slowly when anxious, what seemed to be 10 minutes was actually just 3. At this point, the sound of the water seemed to grow louder, like the sound of water flowing over the ground after heavy rain. He even heard the sound of people running and screaming. 
These strange sounds made Xiao Zhang restless. He got up and opened the door to check the situation. When he opened the door, the water under his feet had already piled up quite deep, submerging his knees. Strangely enough, despite the sounds of fear all around, not a single living person was visible. At that moment, Xiao Zhang remembered the jewelry store that had not been locked properly and thought that this might be his chance to save people. He waded through the deep water towards the entrance, and the water level rose to his back. When he passed by the jewelry store again, he saw a dozen customers inside trying to break the door to escape, some desperately smashing the glass door, but to no avail. Xiao Zhang knew he could not just stand by, he had to save these people. In a moment of quick thinking, he remembered that the door to the jewelry store was not truly locked, he could try to open the door to save them. Looking down once more, Xiao Zhang found an auxiliary lock above the door of the jewelry store, while the people inside were still desperately shouting for help. This nearly made Xiao Zhang fall off his chair because he realized that everything before had been just a dream. The dream experience at the Ginza Square was so vivid that he couldn't help but wonder how he could have fallen into such a deep sleep and had such a terrifying dream. He resolved that as soon as he received his pay tomorrow, he would leave this place. Xiao Zhang glanced at the time, it was already past 12.30 midnight, so he decided to do one last patrol. He put on his coat, walked out of the security office, feeling as though he was missing something but couldn't recall what it was. Since he had already decided not to return, he wandered around, casually illuminating his surroundings, just symbolically doing a quick patrol. Soon, he arrived again at the jewelry store that had not been properly locked before. Despite it being only a dream, it still caused a considerable psychological pressure on Xiao Zhang, making him feel a hint of panic. Comforting himself, he thought that since he had not done anything wrong, he shouldn't be afraid of ghosts knocking on the door. It was just a dream and he shouldn't let it scare him. He mustered the courage to walk past normally, expecting nothing to happen. But just then, he suddenly realized, where had the lock that he had pocketed gone? He remembered having it in his pocket before, now where was it? Xiao Zhang felt a chill down his spine, how could the lock have disappeared? At that moment, Xiao Zhang suddenly heard a woman's voice behind him saying he locked the door, asking him to let them out. Turning around, what he saw was not a trapped crowd, but the staff of the Ginza shopping center, who had found Xiao Zhang dead at the entrance of the jewelry store, clutching a gold bar model in his embrace. Police and forensic departments could not explain how a healthy person could possibly drown in a dry corridor of the mall with no water. What was even more baffling was that, although his lungs were full of water, there was not a single drop of water on Xiao Zhang's body. After this, the Ginza shopping center no longer recruited local security guards and instead handed it over to an external professional security company. The cause of Xiao Zhang's death remained an unsolved mystery. I speculate that Quancheng Square had underground shops in its construction, designed to allow convenient shopping below while playing on the ground above, but this design had a flaw. If a heavy downpour struck, the drainage system might not keep up. Thinking back to July 18, 2007, that day, due to torrential rain, the Ginza shopping plaza suffered a backflow. During that disaster, the jewelry store manager locked the store's entrance to protect the valuables, trapping the customers and staff inside and resulting in a tragedy with multiple deaths. That night, Xiao Zhang had removed the lock from the jewelry store and was distracted by the model of the gold bar, failing to escape in time. Ultimately, he became one of the lost souls of that tragedy, a sad ending filled with mysteries.